So I'm just playing around this uh, right in Swartz. I've just got it plugged up onto the HP counter, um, which I've recently repaired. I just want to verify this is okay and that the uh, Rodin Swartz is also okay. And this seems to be pretty good. So I've set the frequency to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and you can see it's about 35 hertz off. And it's still stabilized, it's only been on for about half an hour. Both this and the uh, Rodin Swartz. Now I actually hooked this up to my Rubidium standard. So that's got 10 megahertz reference going in right now. Uh, so this basically should be bang on. So um, this counter is using its oven. It's not using the, OC, the um, Rubidium standard. So it's just using its OCXO. So considering it's that frequency, it's only out by 35 hertz. That's not that bad, really. So uh, yeah, it's all looking good. Right, so now I'm just playing around with this uh, vein sports a bit more. And I've got a modulation set, I've got FM modulation set of 1kHz and I've turned on my trusty Marconi meter here which is showing the frequency as well so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 and um, oh the fan on the road and swatch just to start making a noise because I need to replace that now um, and here you're showing 1kHz modulation you can't see it very well because the lighting is not great yeah Right, um, so if I uh, go 50 kilohertz modulation, yeah, 50 or 99, it's doing 99. So the rodent source actually appears to be accurate as far as the modulation levels go on FM. AM also agreed with being very close to correct, so I'll put 2.5 kilohertz. And there you go, 2.5 kilohertz. So if I go to AM, turn modulation on FM off, AM modulation back on. Alright, so I've got to set to 70%, and there you go, it's doing exactly 70% according to the Marconi. And if I go to say 30% or something like this, go, yeah, actually do 10%. Okay, 10% more there you go. Um, yeah, 99 percent, and again, very close to correct there. So, you know, I'm happy with that. It's actually working the way it's supposed to be working. Um, you know, it's all doing the things it's supposed to be doing. Obviously, now it sounds like I've got to do the same with the fan, but start making a racket. But the uh, functionality is all bang on. I mean, frequency here is bang on. Marconi's really good, it's got an ICXO in it. And that's a nice stable one. Once I've already calibrated that, did a video on that some time ago. Um, last year I did that one. Same as the unit that uh, Simon Spears has got as well. He's done some videos on them too. Um, right, so that is all fine. And I had to hook up the other counter there. So let's plug it back in there. And that's with modulation, so I'll turn the modulation back off because usually I don't like that. And as you can see it's drifting up slightly more. This is the OCXO and the uh, HP getting closer. So now it's only 20 hertz out. So, um, you know, it's both working fine, so I'm happy with that. So I actually uh, purchased this Rodin Sports for quite a good price. And uh, probably half the price they're going for on eBay pretty much. I, got, I did get it off eBay, but go over half the price, but it's working fine, doesn't seem to have any faults. Apart from the fan, but that's not a big deal. Uh, right, so that's enough of that. Alright, so I pulled the covers off, and uh, I'm actually quite surprised by how little's in it. Let's move the camera a bit closer. And it's got uh, a whole bunch of empty space right here. That's the other casing, it's like a big gap. So it's got modular boards that goes in, and it's got like a um, the back plane over here. Um, so they all plug into that. It's got those multi-way connectors on the back here, which I shall show you. Oh. Shot the camera's still on the tripod, so there's the multi-way multi connector there. It's got a back plane of stacks of connectors for each unit. 
So you've got a couple of RF connectors and stuff in through here. Um, there's the OCXO sitting in the corner there. And there's the power supply. And there is the fan, which looks like it's dead easy to get to. And um, if I get that wiggle around a bit, it's actually got some play in it. So that fan does need replacing. But uh, it's not a big deal. Uh, so, so yes, very little space. And then there's the uh, attenuator unit there. And I've got no idea what this is. I'm guessing from the fact it goes to the power supply, that's a toroidal transformer inside that box there to give shielding. So, uh, yeah, interesting. Alright, so I'm going to work at this road and sport. So, this fan arrived in the mailbag. Um, it's not exactly what I expected. I thought I was going to be getting one with a speed control line on it as well, because that is what the original fan has. Um, so, the colours on this is red is positive. 12 volts thereabouts blue is negative so 0 volts and green is the sense now it's got this interesting little pin here so you don't put it in one place or something I'm not sure but anyway um, orientation pin now I'm going to keep this as original I mean I don't know if you can hear that it rattles um, and it weighs a ton really heavy fan so I'm going to keep that as a spare just in case um, I have an issue so I'm not going to I'm going to keep this all intact. I'm not going to do anything with that. So this fan here, I'll cut these, cut the plug off it, which, which came with. I'm going to put on this little bit of header, female header here. Um, so the light is not best, but um, just it. I put that on, and then I'm going to plug that in because there's no speed sense. So yeah, I'm just hoping this doesn't require a speed sense signal. There are some interconnects going around, but I don't know if it uses that speed sensor or not. It may just be, it happens to be on the fan, I don't know. Um, I'm going to try this anyway, um, and then we'll see what happens. So let's just try and solder this onto this header. It's not going to be the best situation, but um, yeah, you do what you can sometimes. This may be fine, it may not work. If it doesn't work, then I'll have to try and get another fan. It's not a big deal, it's just a fan. I'll always use it one day. Um, right now I need to try and solder this on. Yeah, that's a bit dodgy soldering over top of bits of gear, but uh, I don't have much room here. <laughs> a bit tight for space, and I've got this on the bench as well. All right. Let's stick some fresh solder on these first. If I wasn't being so lazy, I'd get the holder out of my little gripper or something, you know, a pen of ice or something. Anyway. That'll do. That's fine. That's good enough. Right. Now, the original fan has also got these nuts on the back of it. Alright, so it's got bolts to go through. Um, the bottom one's going to be a bit tricky to get to. What I might have to do is actually glue these onto the back of this fan so they don't fall off. <laughs> um, yeah, because I can't actually get to that bottom one underneath there. It's, you just can't get into it. So I'm going to have to move that and glue it onto there so they don't um, fall off when I'm trying to mount it. The, the fan did come with some like threaded screws which go into there here. But, um, they don't go through the holes in the back of the chassis, and I, I don't want to make those holes bigger, so I'm just going to transfer it all over and bolt it like it's like it was originally. I mean, I'm not even sure this fan's going to work yet, um, but yeah, we'll find out. So I'm going to come back in a minute once I've done all that. All right, so I've installed the fan. Um, what I ended up doing, because these actually were quite hard to get out, so I just left them in place. I think they might be inserted or something instead. So I actually this they're just little three more nuts. So I just had some other three more nuts laying around, so I um I use those instead with the original bolts and it's installed and, and I ended up putting the bottom casing off I didn't want to because it uh, still has these Agilent seals on the edge of it get the focus all right so I've peeled those off carefully hopefully I'll put them back on again but um, 
Well, like it really matters. It's just a nice thing to have on it. You know, show it's been to Agilent, been calibrated at some point in its life. But um, yeah, so I put it up on cover off because I wanted to trace that uh, sense motor speed um, sense line. And yes, it does run through the board, and it comes to this ribbon cable here, and runs across. So I'm probably going to have to look at the um, at the circuit diagrams and see if that's going to be an issue or not. But I've got it powered up now. The fan is running. I can barely even hear it. It's really quiet. Um, much quieter than the original. And um, display looks fine. I'll get the camera to see it. There we go. All right, no issues there. Um, it's not giving any errors that I can see. Nothing seems to be a problem. So it looks like the, even though there's no motor feedback, it doesn't seem to actually matter. Um, that ribbon cable comes across and goes over to the OCXO. So I don't know if it's something about maintaining the OCXO temperature because it is right by it. I don't know. I'm going to have to look into that some more and see if there's actually an issue or not. But um, this board here gets a bit warm. But yeah, I don't know. I yeah, <laughs> it may or may not be a problem. Maybe if somebody else can know, um, somebody else knows whether that's an issue or not. What I've done, just give us a feedback and let me know in the comments. Um, from what I can see, it seems to be working okay without any speed sensing. But I did want to get a fan with speed sensing, but for some reason, it didn't have it in the end anyway. So if again, if it's an issue, I can just put a speed in a, a fan in with speed sensing. But uh, I purchased this fan because it's quiet, but the picture did show a speed sense wire. It showed a three wire fan. But anyway, never mind. Not a big deal. Um, hopefully. <laughs> we'll see how it goes.